All right, so uh, this is a capture of a bit of simple fusion modeling using the FlexFuse kit. Um, it shows most of the essential workflow features of the kit, and uh, more detailed looks at those features may be found in several shorter feature-specific videos. The kit adds this button to the Fusion uh, Tool VTab, uh, and that button brings up the main FlexFuse popover, and I usually pin that to keep it handy. I also have Moto's preset browser open with the FlexFuse Geo folder displayed. A double click adds any FlexFuse assembly to the scene, and that uh, assembly's frame geometry is automatically selected, and the move tool is activated. And here I've moved uh, that cylinder just a bit so we can take a look at the uh, FlexFuse Align option in action. Uh, with that option, we can choose to align uh, any combination of position, rotation, and scale uh, of the new item to any selected item in the scene. Here we simply match position. And perhaps not the best example because this new FlexFuse item is essentially uh, an extruded profile. So what we're aligning is its uh, starting point, uh, and that starting point has been aligned to the center of the cylinder. Nonetheless, that initial position match, plus the auto activation of the move tool, make it easy to tweak the new item's position. I'm going to use this new U-channel uh, FlexFuse item as a mesh fusion trimming surface and uh, need to change one of its mesh op properties. To do that, I use this uh, item options popover button, which pops up the user channel form for the selected uh, FlexFuse item. I'm disabling the Thicken option in the U-channel assembly, which makes it into a 2D surface. All right, so now we've got uh, two items, so let's do some fusion. We always want to fuse the actual procedural mesh, never the assembly's frame mesh item. To make that easy, and to avoid inadvertently uh, selecting frames, I hit the Op Meshes Selectable button. That disables the selectability of the frames, effectively filtering them out of any 3D viewport selection. With the cylinder procedural mesh selected, I use the Fusion Pi to create a new fusion item. Then, shift-click on the uh, U-channel mesh and add it as an intersection trim. Here, I'm editing the U-channel using its FlexFuse handles. If I want to edit its uh, frame geometry, which in this case is a polyline profile, I first need to select it. There are a couple of ways we can select the frame, even when we've filtered out its selection, as we have here with the uh, Select Op Meshes button. First, there is a button uh, available in both the main FlexFuse popover as well as the main uh, FlexFuse pie menu, or we can use middle click and hold with the cursor over the procedural mesh, um, which is what I've done here. And with the frame geometry uh, selected, we're ready to edit it in element mode. And remember, uh, you always edit the frame when you want to change the shape of the procedural, you always edit the frame in element mode. All right, so now I'm adding another uh, flex use item. And again, I selected the cylinder first, so this new item uh, will match the cylinder's position. To make things clearer, uh, as I adjust some of the handles of the uh, new uh, FlexFuse item, I first uh, hit the Toggle Handles button in the uh, FlexFuse Pie menu, which uh, limits the handles to those associated with the selected uh, item. And note that when I get around to scaling this item, I do uh, non-proportional scaling in uh, the element level, but uh, it's usually preferable to do a uniform scaling at the item level because that also scales the assembly's channel handles. So once I have this item uh, positioned and shaped as desired, uh, the plan is to use it as a subtractive trim uh, with the further intention of fitting a copy of that same item into that trim cavity. The kit offers several duplication options. In this case, I'm using the Fuse Frozen Duplicate option, which uh, replaces the assembly's procedural mesh with a uh, frozen copy as that fusion source mesh. 
So after duplication, we have a new non-procedural fusion trim mesh, and our assemblies mesh is no longer a fusion source mesh. And that sets us up for a common multi-fusion item modeling method. I'll use the assemblies mesh now as the first primary mesh of a new fusion item, which will nestle nicely into our trim cavity. So here I'm creating that uh, second fusion item by selecting the uh, procedural mesh and once again going to the standard fusion pie menu. Uh, here I'm just increasing the strip width so we can see uh, the, the matching uh, trim cavity and the primary more clearly. To maintain the relationship between the trim and uh, the new fusion's primary, I make the trim a child of the assembly's frame. And remember that frame geometry is the parent of the uh, entire uh, flex fuse primitive, so now all of those elements, including that duplicate trim, will stay in sync when we do transforms. Next, I'll add uh, several new meshes to our new fusion item. And again, uh, I'm using the location matching feature to uh, ease that process of aligning those new meshes. I'm not fusing anything yet. Uh, it'll be quicker and easier to fuse all of the new meshes at once. Here, I'm just uh, bringing in the new items and uh, adjusting their positions and scales, uh, playing with their frames on the element level, uh, handles, all of that stuff, in preparation for fusing them to our new fusion item. And a quick note here that uh, you can use any uh, item as a target for this position matching feature. Uh, that target doesn't have to be a flex fuse uh, assembly. Here I'm using a channel handles locator as the target because I know that locator is centered in the top arc of this pill cylinder assembly mesh. And that gives us a very useful position match with this radial array assembly. Here I'm editing the uh, array assembly uh, using its frame mesh for transforms and uh, the channel handles as well as the uh, frame mesh and element mode to uh, reshape the assembly. The two array assemblies have a lot of uh, options and range and we'll look at those in detail in a video dedicated to those particular assemblies. Once I have the radial array configured, I'm going to fuse the three recently added meshes to our second fusion item using drag and drop. And to make that work, I first hide the frame meshes uh, using the FlexFuse Pi menu and I've also hidden the subtractive copy of this uh, pill cylinder mesh that, that we created earlier. It belongs to the first fusion item and would just get in the way of our uh, fusion drops. After that, it's uh, just regular uh, fusion drag and drop. And uh, then I bring back all of the frame geometry and continue modeling. Here, I'm setting up for trimming this boxy mesh with uh, one of the other fusion items trims. Shared trims can provide geometric continuity across multiple fusion items. And remember, any trim can be applied to any primary. You don't need to explicitly add an existing trim to other fusion items. Rather, you simply use Fusion's trim command. Next, it's on to another array assembly this time used as a trim. And uh, I'll fast forward uh, through that because, again, we'll look at that assembly in detail in another video. And finally, uh, a look at another duplication option. This boxy mesh that we added to the second fusion overlaps the first fusion. So, uh, much as we did earlier, we want to trim that first fusion, creating a matching cavity. This time, we'll use the Merge Mesh Push Dupe option. It creates a new procedural with our original mesh as its Merge Mesh's source. That way, our new trim will always be in sync with the original. So, uh, first I make the uh, first fusion item's uh, source meshes visible so that we can select the desired meshes for our trim and I'm making sure that I have selected our newly created duplicate, not the original, by selecting that duplicate in the item list. 
With the desired meshes selected, I go ahead and perform the fusion trim. And note that the duplicate uh, created by that merge mesh push dupe uh, command uh, has a push influence mesh op. That allows us to dynamically adjust the gap between the original and the trim. So again, we have a setup here where everything stays in sync when we edit the original. All right, so uh, that's an overview of the uh, Flex Fuse Fusion workflow. And we'll look at uh, details of that workflow and, and some of the options uh, in uh, shorter videos that focus on those uh, details, as well as all of the individual assemblies and uh, their various uh, options. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks.